Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to our worship service for Sunday night, June the 13th. A uh, few announcements as we are getting started. Um, Wednesday is our Young at Heart meal in the Family Life Center at 11 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, uh, youth need to be here at about 8.30 to load up to get ready to leave. They're not leaving to go to youth camp at 9. Uh, Wednesday, June the 23rd, the Young at Heart will make a trip to Relics Marketplace. You're leaving from the back parking lot at 9.15. Bring a sack lunch. Um, Operation Christmas Child emphasis cards are down front. I think we still lack about three cards for the month of June. So if you want to get a card and pick that up, that would be great. Remember that our business meeting, instead of being tonight after church, is going to be next Sunday morning after church. And remember, if you want to give an offering to our church and you're not in attendance with us, you can mail it to Box 205 or you can drop it by the church. If you're here tonight and want to make an offering, you can put it in the plate at the front or the back. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight as we are considering the characteristics that you have seen as desirable in our lives and, Lord, how we should achieve those characteristics. Lord, we just ask that you be with us throughout the week, especially these that are going to be gone, Lord, that you'll just give them traveling mercies and bring them back with a renewed hope and grace in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our call to worship tonight is the song called Holiness. It's a little simple. We're going to sing this whole song. Thank you. 
continue with our singing tonight with As the Deer. control tonight in the desirable characteristics. Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 as we are going to look at the last of this cluster of fruit of the Spirit that we have been going through on Sunday night and we have made it to the last uh, cluster which is uh, self-control or some translations there may say temperance. And so that is what Paul is talking about here, beginning in verse 22, where he said, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, or self-control. Against such there is no law. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now. We do thank you for another opportunity that we have to gather and worship and fellowship as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we're thankful for these different uh, clusters of fruit that make up the fruit of the Spirit that you 
produce in our life as we yield ourselves to you. And Lord, we pray that this would be evident in our life so that it gives us more opportunities to witness for you and to be the disciples that you've placed us here to be. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, this is the last of this cluster of fruit of the uh, Spirit that we've been dealing with. And what we are talking about tonight is that the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is able to exercise control. He is able to exercise control over the flesh. So now, rather than us producing those things that we were producing on our own whenever we weren't walking in the Spirit, but whenever we were fulfilling the lust of the flesh... It, those things are no longer evident in our life as a part of our lifestyle, as a habit in our lives anymore. But now we are yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit and He is producing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control or temperance. The idea with temperance is the Holy Spirit is controlling us. And if we compare this to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this means that love is discipline. The Holy Spirit is helping us to live a disciplined lifestyle, a controlled lifestyle, one that does not behave unbecomingly. And so rather than us wanting to continue to fulfill the lust of the flesh and walk according to the flesh, we are now walking according to the Spirit, and He is producing these desirable characteristics in our life, which also shows to us that God desires for us to grow. He desires for us to mature. He didn't save us to leave us the way that we were, but He wants to produce these godly characteristics, these desirable characteristics in our life, so that others see Him working in us, and they desire to know about Him. They desire to have this same love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance being produced in their life as they walk in the Spirit. And I, much like we emphasize that it was important that love was the first one talked about and being this cluster of the fruit of the Spirit, it is not by accident that the last one that is mentioned is self-control because even though it is mentioned last, this is probably uh, the most difficult for us. Self-control. It is not meaning that this is the least important of the cluster. We need to understand that it is us that must realize that we have to be totally surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And as we are totally surrendered to the Holy Spirit, He is producing these things in our life. And so now I'm no longer desiring control. I no longer want to be in control. But as the Spirit is working on me and as He is uh, producing this fruit in my life, I'm becoming more and more like Christ. And I turn over control of areas of my life to him. Uh, and this is really what we begin to see here is this is what God wants to produce in our life. He wants to produce love. He wants to produce joy. He wants to produce peace and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance or self-control. He wants to produce those things in our lives so that we grow, so that we mature, so that we reach the uh, place where he wants us to be and get to that point where we are producing this fruit in abundance. And it's evident that there is a work taking place in our life through the Holy Spirit. But many times we are more like what uh, was mentioned in Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says there, now will I sing... To my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Those things that are mentioned, uh, in verses 19, 20, and 21, those are the wild grapes that if we don't take time to uh, be disciplined in studying the Word and, and praying through the Word and living according to the Word and being uh, 
yielded to the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit, those wild vines, those wild grapes will still cause problems in our lives. And so that is why it's important that we turn over control of every aspect of our life to Christ and we are totally yielded to the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that there are days where it is harder than others, right? That there are days where we just, because of that old nature still being a part of our lives sometimes and that battle that still takes place, there are some days where we find difficulty doing God's will. And being in God's will, we want to do things our way. We want to live according to our plans, our goals, our dreams. And so whenever something doesn't line up with things that we've already had planned or mapped out, we have a problem doing God's will. But what Paul is talking about here to the church at Galatia is as we continue to yield to the Spirit and walk in the Spirit and walk according to the Spirit, all of these clusters of fruit will be evident in our life, will be produced in our life, and we will be more like Christ as we continue to allow Him to control every aspect of our life. But we know there are days where we speak His words and we work His works in the world and we allow Him to... Uh, have control, but there are some days where we find ourselves outside his control, living at our own strong-willed, wayward ways. And so the importance here is to take in all of what Paul was saying. Walk in the Spirit. Yield to the Spirit. Stay in line with the Spirit. And whenever the Holy Spirit reveals to you areas in your life where he doesn't have control, surrender those areas to him. And we have the perfect character of self-control seen in the Bible in the person of Jesus Christ. Self-control for the Christian means that my whole person, my whole being, body, soul, and spirit comes under the control of Christ just as we notice with his life that he was totally under the control of God the Father. The idea of what Paul is dealing with here in Galatians chapter 5 is that in order for us to get to where he's wanting them to get in chapter 6 where he starts talking about fulfilling the law of Christ, we have to be walking in the Spirit. If we're going to bear one another's burdens, if we're going to uh, communicate and teach and be there for one another and sow good seed, then we have to be allowing the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit in our lives. And that's what we begin to see here. Everything about us, our being, our body, our soul, our spirit, comes under the control of Christ. The old nature may still be present, but He is no longer in control. The old man is no longer in control. We are no longer a slave to the old man. We have been set free through our faith in Jesus Christ. We have become bond slaves of righteousness and we are to live for Christ and we can live a righteous life, life as we talked about this morning. We are not just survivors, we are more than conquerors through our faith in Jesus Christ. As we come under the control of Christ, he wants to completely transform our lives, our whole being. Christ is now in control of your life. Now that's scary when we begin to think about that, right? We do realize what that means. If Christ is in total control of my life, He can do with me what He wishes. That's what this idea of temperance or self-control is, is that every aspect and area of my life is surrendered and yielded to Him, and now He is totally in control of my life and can do with me what He wishes. That's the problem that Jonah had, wasn't it? He was fine with God being in control until God told him to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go to Nineveh, so he tried to run as far as the other direction as he could go. And what happened? He was swallowed by a whale, giant fish, whatever you want to call it, whatever it was. He could have been swallowed by a minnow if God wanted him to be swallowed by a minnow. We have to understand that. The idea was is God was getting him to see 
that he wanted to be in total control of his life and knew where he wanted him to be. And so our example of having a character uh, quality of self-control in his life ultimately is Christ. Who, wherever Christ moved, God was in control and ultimately Christ himself was practicing self-control. Where whoever he met, whatever circumstances he encountered, he was always in control. It was not by accident that he wound up in those areas that he wound up in, ministering to the people that he was ministering unto, performing the miracles where he was performing the miracles because he was exactly where he needed to be. And he had totally surrendered himself to the will of the Father. And so if we are totally surrendered to the Father, and if we are acknowledging that He is in total control of my life, then we are saying that He can do with me what He wishes. He can carry me where He wants to carry me. I will go where He calls me to go. I will do what He tells me to do. And it will be a joy to do so because I am following Christ. I am being obedient to His call and His example has already shown us what we need to do. And so there may be times where we find ourselves struggling simply because of what? We don't want anyone interfering with our lives. And we certainly don't want him interfering with our lives. And that's where the struggle comes in. And we, we have no problem with him calling us somewhere and telling us to go somewhere as long as that's within our comfort zone or our area of uh, comfort, whatever that may be. Or if, as long as he's calling us to stay within a certain geographical location or whatever. But it's whenever he starts calling us to do this or calling us to surrender this, whatever it is in your life that that may be that brings discomfort that we begin to resist. And we don't want to give over control in that area. But we have to understand that we have to get to the point that Christ got to in the garden whenever he said, not my will, but thy will be. It's no longer preferring our own way. It's no longer desiring our own way. It's no longer doing our own things. It's not, no more relying on self-determination. But we understand that we are turning everything over to Christ. We are no longer and never were really in control of our own destiny. God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan for your life. God has, a, has placed you where, he, uh, where you are for a reason. You were never in control of your own destiny. It wasn't by accident that you came in contact with who you came in contact with or that you were in a unique position, much like Nehemiah we talked about this morning. And so we are totally surrendered to him. We are totally dedicated to him. We realize that we used to uh, produce the works of the flesh that were uh, mentioned in 19 through 21. That's who we used to be. That's what we used to be characterized as. That's what used to be totally and always evident in our life. But now as we have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ and His Spirit has indwelled us and we are walking in the Spirit, now we are producing not the works of the flesh, but the Holy Spirit is producing the fruit of the Spirit in us. I cannot produce love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ and allowing His Spirit to produce those things in me. It's not that I need to try to be more loving. It's not that I need to have more joy or produce more peace or be more long-suffering or gentle or produce goodness or faith or meekness or temperance on my own, but the Spirit will do that simply as I yield myself totally to Christ. But here's the great thing that 
we see as we be, begin to look at this, as we've been going through this and studying this, is that God never gives up on us. No matter how many times we stumble, no matter how many times we falter, no matter how many times we fail, no matter how many times we get out of line, God never gives up on us. His love never runs out. His mercy never runs out. His grace never runs out. It is always there. He is always there. And we just have to remember, we have to remember the importance of, of relying on him. And whenever he is talking about these clusters of fruit in our life, he is wanting to move in our lives. He, was, he is wanting to take control of our lives so that we are no longer in turmoil, so that we're no longer in conflict, but so that we can experience peace and love and joy and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. He wants all these things. He wants to produce all these things in our lives so that we are no longer in conflict or turmoil, but that we can truly experience who God is. That's the thing <clears throat> that. Paul is trying to get the church at Galatia to see is that these things he's mentioning, this cluster of the fruit of the Spirit, this idea of God being in total control of my life and turning chaos and turmoil into peace and joy, even in the midst of suffering, is because it had become a normal thing in Paul's life. And he wanted the Galatians to see that. He wanted the church at Galatia to understand that. That this could be a normal part of their life. Paul spent the majority of his ministry writing these letters. Either under house arrest, chained Roman soldiers or whatever else was going on. And yet as he was writing these letters and encouraging and challenging these churches. He said God is in total control of my life. He has me exactly where he wants me to be. He is producing all of these things in my life. This is not who Paul used to be. We know who Paul used to be. Paul used to be Saul. He used to persecute the church. He willingly watched as the people stoned Stephen to death. And, he, and let them do it. Encouraged them to do it. And yet now he is saying, I don't want to be known for idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and variance and emulations and wrath and strife and seditions and all of these things. But I want to be totally denying self and allowing the fruit of the Spirit to be evident in my life so that God gets the glory, so that God gets the credit, so that He is magnified through my life. So this, these things that we're talking about, and specifically self-control, can be a normal part of our lives as Christians, but we have to be totally surrendered to Christ. And we know that these are times of difficulty. We know that these are times where we as Christians are being tested more so than we have in a long time in the United States of America, for sure. But not much different than what the church uh, experienced in the book of Acts and other periods in history. And so for us to be controlled by Christ and allow Christ to produce all these things in our life, this comes at a price. I have to turn myself wholly over to God. I must give up all my rights. It is what Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, when he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Some translations there talk about this being an act of worship. 
This idea of being a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so what Paul is saying here is that God provides everything that we need to live a faithful life. But when we reject him and abandon his way, we become unfruitful and troubled. And we are called to follow God's plan. We are to utilize the power he offers. And when we do that, we will become a showcase to others of what God's power can do in our lives. If you were to go and read Psalm 103, you would notice that David praised God for his great love and kindness. We have reason to worship him tonight and should worship him for his great love and kindness. What David would remind us of in Psalm 103 is that God's love never ceases and that he will always be faithful through all the promises he has ever made us. He's always faithful. <clears throat> this leads us to the point where we must have a prayer of submission. We must offer a prayer of submission. We must be totally committed. And when we make this commitment, we will see a gradual, gentle growth in godliness. That's what Paul's talking about here. He said these things are produced. It will be a gradual, gentle, continual growth in godliness. The seed has to be planted, it has to be watered, it has to be nurtured. We know all the work that goes into it, but yet at the end, a bountiful harvest is produced. And so ultimately what we see here is that we should desire a Christ-controlled will. It is only when our wills are brought into harmony and submission to His will that we discover the secret of divine power and productivity. <clears throat> Too many Christians tonight are worn out because they've been trying to produce all of this on their own rather than simply yielding control to the Holy Spirit and allowing Him to have control and produce it on His own. In their life. It's simply about making ourselves available. We must make ourselves available to Christ. We must make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit. And as we do that, He will become more active in our lives. He will produce more of this fruit in our life. And we will grow and we will mature. And we will become more and more like Christ. And as we become more and more like Christ... It will draw others to the kingdom. As we have been looking at this, and certainly as we close out tonight, we have to understand that temperance is the control of Jesus. Self-control is love refraining. And it is the Spirit of God within us that guarantees growth. If you want to see and others specifically to see love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control in your life, surrender to the Spirit. It is Him living in you that guarantees growth, maturity, and conformity to Christ. As we talked about before, we're all in different stages of growth. There may be a cluster of fruit that you're not there yet, but God is producing, God is working. Continue to yield control, continue to be surrendered. Allow Him to work and move in that area. But as this is a gradual, progressive, gentle, continual growth, others around us will be aware of the changes in our character. They'll see that we are growing. They will see that we are progressing. They will see that the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is still producing fruit in our life. 
And as they notice this change and progression in our character, conversation, and conduct, it will be the litmus test of our claim as a Christian and open up doors of opportunity for us to continue to be disciples who are making more disciples and who are being witnesses for the kingdom and ambassadors that we have been placed here to be. As Miss Melinda comes, we'll pray, prepare for our hymn of invitation. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your house tonight, worshiping together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we pray that you would continue to produce this fruit in our life, that we would be totally surrendered to you. And Lord, if you have revealed areas in our life to us tonight where we're not surrendered, where we're not as yielded as we should be, that we would make that commitment, that we would pray that prayer of submission and allow you to have full and total control of that area of our life. Lord, whatever it is that is hindering our growth, reveal it to us and help us to surrender all to you tonight. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to stand.